morning, good morning. It's a little bit before sunrise. It's about seven o'clock, 7 a.m. Just look at this. Really pretty spot up here in the mountains. I've been hearing elk bugling last night and this morning, and I don't know if it's elk or if it's hunters calling for elk because it's hunting season. Got a lot of fun stuff planned for today. I'm really excited about today. So let's get on the road and get going. Okay, we're parked here at the trailhead in Red Fleet State Park. I normally don't go to state parks. In general, I think they're kind of overrated. Some are really spectacular, but a lot of them are just like a reservoir with a campground next to it. And then it costs like $14 to get in. But for this state park, there was no entrance fee and there's an interesting thing that I want to see that I want to show you. The funny thing is I can't remember if I've been here before. I think I have, but I think it's been eight to 10 years and I see a lot of stuff. And so <laughs> forgive me for occasionally forgetting things. But today we're gonna be in the greater Vernal area. Vernal is a town of about 10,000 people in Eastern Utah, far Eastern Utah, like Northeastern Utah. This reservoir over here, which I think is just called Red Fleet Reservoir, is kind of the center point of Red Fleet State Park. I'm headed toward the, the shoreline of the lake. All right, here we go. We are close to our destination. Great views of the lake from up here. All right, so this kind of shelf of rock right here, this is where all of the dinosaur tracks are. And these couple of signs over here talk about the dinosaur and the dinosaurs that left these tracks and uh, try to help you locate the tracks. Which is helpful because dinosaur tracks, I know from past experience, aren't always easy to locate or recognize. We've got these two right here. There's one and two. Each one of these is a three-toed print. This is my, the size of my hand for scale. Apparently these dinosaurs, uh, I think it's called the Dilophosaurus, 20 feet long, eight feet high, stood on two legs, and weighed about as much as a horse. Then you've got right here another pair. This is actually a, a track leading up to those ones that I just showed you. So here's one. Uh, I think here is one right there. And these are the two I showed you a minute ago. There are hundreds of footprints along here. Here's a good sized one right here. But then here on this slab, I don't know if you can see them, but you can see the the indentations if you're if you're looking at it right. Lots of tracks over here. Here are some smaller ones. Just a little bit bigger than my hand. Part of the fun of, of seeing dinosaur tracks is that they are kind of hard to find. It's a little bit of a hunt, a little bit of a scavenger hunt. Even if you know you're in the right general area, you still kind of have to look around a little bit harder. Well, that was awesome. That was really neat. If you like seeing dinosaur traces in the wild, definitely a, a spot to come to. Pretty easy hike to get here. It took me 20 minutes. It was less than a mile. I think like, I don't know, seven or eight tenths of a mile. I think it's a mile and a half round trip. That's all I have planned in, uh, in Red Fleet State Park. So let's get back to the car and drive on to our next destination. What is this creature? has found this in the middle of the trail. All right, we are down the road a little ways outside of the state park. We're hiking to an arch, three cars. Uh, we all pulled up to the parking area at the same time. And so I'm hurrying to get there before them. But yeah, I think it's like a 
15, 20 minute hike to this arch. It's not really signed very well. So this is called Moonshine Arch. It's a great arch. It's not enormous, but it's still pretty big. I'll put the stats on the screen here. Here's the top of the arch. There are some other little arches back behind here that we'll check out in a minute, but let's, uh, let's pull out the drone. few arches in this area. This one, this one, and then that main one. Well, that was awesome. I really enjoyed that arch and those caves behind it and definitely worth visiting if you can find it. It's a little bit tricky to find. I initially entered in the trailhead to to Google Maps and it took me to a completely different spot to some private land. And there's even a sign at the gate to that land that says, this is not the way to Moonshine Arch. Heading back to the car now and uh, go on to the next adventure, which might be lunch. All right, we are in Vernal and I lied to you a little bit. We didn't go straight to lunch. I just, uh, I just spent 45 minutes in the library here, getting online with my laptop. Uh, sending some emails and doing some work that I had to do. But now we're about to get lunch. We are at a place called Country Grub. With a name like that, you know it's gonna be good. feel sick and great at the same time. I got a double cheeseburger with fries, and then I got a sampler platter that had mozzarella sticks, jalapeno poppers, uh, fried pickles, fried zucchini, and fried mushrooms in it. Didn't finish everything, but I gave it a valiant effort and uh, got my money's worth, and I'm, I'm pretty full. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Let's get back on the road and go see the next item on the list. So we're still in Vernal, and I wanted to show you guys the kind of the, the mascot of Vernal. This is Dinah, the dinosaur. She's a 40 foot tall fiberglass dinosaur. I think originally it was at a motel here in Vernal in like the 50s, and then in the 90s it was moved here to welcome visitors to town. Pretty cool. The sign there says Utah's dinosaur country because uh, Dinosaur National Monument is just half an hour from here. And I was in there yesterday when I went to Jones Hole, but I won't be going to like the visitor center or the, the dinosaur quarry part that's closer to Vernal. I've been there before and it's really neat, but uh, I'm not gonna do it on this trip. And now on to the next spot. Just did a Walmart run, picked up a couple new blocks of ice for the cooler. A couple of apples, some yogurt for my uh, to have with my morning granola, peanut butter, and then I've been using these lately. These are like baby wipes, actually meant for babies, wet wipes for babies. But uh, they have basically no scent, and they're uh, they're nice for for wiping off in between the days when I feel like taking a shower. And it's like three dollars for a big thing of these. They're um, they're in the diaper aisle, usually the baby diaper aisle and I like them a lot. All right, we are pulling up to McConkie Ranch, and uh, it's a private ranch, but 
they do allow visitors. It's a good thing they do because they have something pretty spectacular here. That being a ton of really impressive Native American rock art, specifically petroglyphs. So let's go check them out. I think it's a $4 suggested donation to access the site, which I'm fine with paying. So the petroglyphs are on the cliffs up here, and there's this little self-pay kiosk. Sign guest book, stay on trails, leash dogs, $5 donation per group. And you can uh, leave a note inside if you want. Waters and soda, a dollar each. Looks like there's just water in here now. And it looks like there are a couple different trails. I'm here, one trail goes this way, up along the cliff, this way. One cliff goes this way and along the cliff, this way. We'll start with this one and then see what I feel like doing after that. Okay, so I got to this point. It says Three Kings, Three Kings panel, trail back, trail end, turn around and go to back trail. And so I was looking to see where this Three Kings panel was. And boy, it's a good thing I have zoom, zoom on this camera. Let me show you. It's up here. Pretty cool, very cool, spectacular. It's just far away. Pretty impressive that they managed to get up there. Well, that was great. That was definitely worth seeing. Uh, I did both trails. The first trail was definitely worth doing. It had some just spectacular rock art on it. The second trail, also worth doing if you have extra time. Uh, and if you have either binoculars or a zoom camera, because uh, without those, you can't even really see those, that uh, the Three Kings panel. But overall, worth doing. I think I spent like an hour and a half here. And now it is 3.30 and it's time to go find a campsite. We're gonna drive back into the Uinta Mountains uh, to the west of Vernal. I think it's like two hours from Vernal. It's only 80, 85 miles to where I wanna go from Vernal, but I think a lot of that is on dirt roads, and so it'll take a couple hours to get there, and uh, I will show you my campsite once I find one.
You know, every so often I get to a place and it's beautiful, but it's more than that. I feel something. Like it feels more deeply beautiful to me. It's like a, it's almost like spiritually beautiful to me. Like I feel it in my soul, you know? I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but that happens to me sometimes where it's just like my being and the place I am are just like aligning perfectly and it just feels really good. And this is one of those places. Driving through that valley down lower was just gorgeous. Like and with the, I'm sure the light right now, like the lighting, like toward the end of the day, the, the golden hour lighting, I'm sure that has something to do with it. But like the light driving through that valley was just gorgeous. And then from that main valley, I turned and drove up a smaller valley to find a campsite. And that's where I am now. And that's what the drone footage you just saw is of, is of this valley. It's just this epic mountain valley. Um, unfortunately, as I'm sure you saw in the video, um, a lot of the trees in the Uintas in this mountain range have suffered from uh, beetle kill. There's some beetle that's destroying millions of trees uh, in the western United States. and So that part of it is unfortunate. But apart from that, what a place. This just feels good to my soul. And if you haven't experienced a place like that, I, I hope you find a place that does that for you someday. The amazing thing is, I didn't know anything about this place. I came here to fish the creek that's down over there. And that was the only reason. I hadn't seen any pictures of the area. I just uh, saw a mention of this creek and that it had a certain kind of fish that I'm interested in pursuing. And so I decided to come here. But man, what a place. This is just gorgeous. The campsite itself up there, it's fine. It's kind of close to the road. It's not super secluded from the road. There was an amazing campsite like right next to the creek, a little bit further down, but there was a tent pitched there. It's the only, um, the only other camper I've seen in this entire valley. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I think it was a pretty fun day, full of a variety of activities. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your favorite part was, and I'll see you in the next one.